Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabori here. Yep, we're now in August, which, believe it or not, today is Digimon Day. Yeah. <laughs> Digimon, Digital Monsters, Digimon are the champions. You know that. <laughs> but I'm not going to do any uh, Digimon reviews or any of that stuff. No, I'm not at this rate, but it's great to celebrate even on this particular day. But I am wearing uh, a brand new t-shirt that I got at Big Lots, which says not today. And it has Snoopy just <laughs> resting. You know, he's dead tired. You know, he doesn't want to do anything. Especially on the weekend. <laughs> well, I don't blame him. Well, anyway, um, because I did went out to Big Lots, and as well as Dollar Tree and all, just to, you know, get something special. Well... It was a bad week, well, bad or, well, good or bad, I mean, whatever. Especially on that particular Wednesday, you know, after we were going shopping you know, at those stores. Uh, there was, like, plenty of arguments going around. I don't want to talk about it, but it's best not to. But to make it up for it, um, we did actually went to Numero Uno. Um... Uh, yeah, because we haven't been there in a while. You know, we just had some delicious pepperoni pizza with bread puffs, salad, and we had to save up the spaghetti for the next day, you know, for leftovers because we were getting really full. And then we had to continue to go shopping, you know, do some other stuff. But, but then things just seemed to get much worse after that. Uh, therefore, we got hungry again. Uh, we had to get some medicine, you know, for the family and all. Because, uh, well, just to make us feel better. Um, I had Burger King. Well, we, we all had Burger King uh, late, late at night. Uh, we, and we were just going to relax for a while before we end up going to sleep. All of a sudden, I started feeling sick. Um, it's not COVID, thank goodness, because I've been taking good care of myself, been wearing a mask and all. I just still haven't got my vaccine shot yet. So again, I'm still not ready for that. I'm just hoping for the, for the better. But what happened was, though, I had like a lump in my throat. It, it got stuck. It might have been the mucus. It just won't go away. Um... I try to sleep as, as good as possible, but then I end up getting up, went straight to the bathroom, and started vomiting. Uh, really bad, too. And I even vomited again when I was having the spaghetti. You know, sucks, I know. So at that rate, I had to get some medicine. I even took some Tylenol and, and even some juice, like orange juice and and even the Gatorade just in case and I had to have some soup too so that would recover that yeah, I mean I was getting a sore throat later on too because of the mucus so I had to have plenty of rest for a while and I had to relax too and I know I was posting some more videos on YouTube and all just just to calm myself but I am recovering from that, thank goodness, and I hope everything will be okay. Anyway, um, last night uh, I did actually watch a movie. It's a blockbuster that, unfortunately, it's only available on streaming. But hey, I have Amazon Fire TV Stick 4K, so who knows what movies are available. It's a military sci-fi action drama called... The Tomorrow War, which stars Chris Pratt, who's also the executive producer, as a former military soldier who's a biology teacher and a family man who got drafted, joining in with the present day soldiers and civilians that are being sent from the future to fight an army full of aliens that are taking over. But it's going to take a lot tougher than he thought. <laughs> yeah. 
Now, this movie is being acquired by Amazon Studios, uh, since this was originally set to be as a theatrical release from Paramount Pictures. Uh, yeah, it was going to be released during the Christmas time season, but because of the COVID-19 pandemic, yeah, I know, a lot of films had suffered the same way, uh, with remor without remorse and, and even uh, coming to America for that matter. Uh, because Paramount did sign a deal with uh, Amazon, they decided to uh, take over and, and be able to release it via streaming. Though some selective feeders, mostly drive-ins, will carry them. If that depends, I mean, they have to sign a deal with them so they'll be able to project it. But I, I would say this movie would have been a lot better if they had played it in feeders as opposed to streaming, just like how HBO Max and Disney Plus are doing, you know, just to save some time. But, I know. I wish they could do that. Anyway. So, yeah, it's, it's like those, um, all these other sci-fi, military type of films, like Edge of Tomorrow, and um, even The Time Machine, or Pacific Rim, or Stars of Troopers, and all that stuff. I mean, when it comes to you know, military action right there. Yeah, Halo and all. <laughs> yeah. Um, but um, I'm a sucker for the time traveling concept that they put into it, the story, so it's always cool to see what's going on. Especially now that it's being set to the future, so that means they'll be able to prevent that from happening. So that way everyone will be safe. And I love that. So. I was really uh, looking forward to this one. So, let's begin. It stars Chris Pratt, uh, Yvonne uh, Strahovski, uh, Ryan Kira Armstrong, uh, J.K. Simmons, yep, you may remember him from Spider-Man, the uh, Sam Raimi trilogy, that is. But he was also in Juno, he was in Whiplash, he was doing all these... Uh, <laughs> State Farm commercials, and he's done a lot of great work in his career. He also uh, was an announcer for AMC. Uh, well, yeah, if you saw those old commercials from 1993, you probably remember that. Um, anyway. Betty Gilpin uh, from the TV show Glow, that's on Netflix. She was also previously in the film The Hunt, great film. Uh, Sam Richardson. Uh, who's a a comedian, an actor who was in a TV show called Beep, yeah, with Julia Louis Dreyfus, that was on HBO. Um, Edwin Hodge from all the Purge films, Ugh, not interested in those. Uh, Jasmine Matthews, Keith Powers, Mary Lynn uh, Rice Cub, you may remember her from. Tr 24, along with It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, um, Mr. Show, yeah, she's she's a great actress and a funny comedian, and I, I know you saw her in other movies too. Yeah, Mike Mitchell, uh, from who's a member of the Birthday Boys, and he's on a show on Netflix called Love, and Seth Scanal. It's written by Zach Dean, who uh, actually wrote uh, Deathfall, and it's directed by Chris McKay, yes, the same man who gave us uh, the Lego movies, uh, which, interesting enough, Chris Platt um, actually starred. <laughs> the movie begins, set in December 2022, we meet a biology teacher who's a former Green Beret soldier, and he's a family man. Dan Forrester, who's played by Chris Pratt, that's okay. <laughs> he fails to get a job at a prestigious research center, but then during the broadcast of the World Cup series, you know, soccer, soldiers from the year 2051 had arrived to warn that humanity is on the brink of extinction due to a war with the alien invaders known as the White Spikes. Yeah, it's sort of like a cross between the Xenomorphs 
from the Alien films, uh, along with uh, Tremors, you know, because they do have some, a lot of blood that kind of stinks too. They look almost a little bit like those Skull Crushers from Consco Island, among many others of other sci-fi films we've seen <laughs> that they put together for this particular creature. Uh, the White Spikes uh, had arrived on November 2048, and they killed the majority of humanity within three years after their arrival. In a response, uh, world militaries are being sent to the future through a wormhole that's known as the Jump Link. Fewer than 30% have survived during their seven-day deployment which prompts an, an international draft, so that means they had to go from, from one country to another to fight against those uh, aliens. Dan receives a notice that he has been drafted when he tells his wife, Emmy, played by Betty Gilpin, uh, along with uh, his daughter, uh, Murray, played by Ryan Kira Armstrong, uh, while well, she was just digging through uh, <laughs> her back scenes and all. Um, he was also trying to uh, recuperate with his estranged father, um, James Daniel Forrester Sr., played by J.K. Simmons, um, who was a mechanic engineer to help him remove from the draft band that's attached to his arm. Yeah, which, it was supposed to be a test that he was given, but it was but it got attached to it, and knowing that he's going to spend the entire week, uh, or perhaps, I guess, in some cases, seven years. I know, it gets complicated when he thinks about it. That soon he might be able to die if, if he doesn't help. But, I know, time travel does get complicated these days. <laughs> um, anyway, so... He was going to do that, but then he left them, and his mother had returned from the Vietnam War because he felt that it was dangerous to remain with them. But Dan says he does, does not want his help and calls him a coward. So he left, and he reports for basic training with other draftees to join around, including Charlie, uh, played by Sam Richardson, yeah, he was a Ph.D. In, in Earth and atmospheric scientist. Yeah, <laughs> but he's basically the comic relief in the film. <laughs> but he's just coming up with all these other jokes. He just can't stop talking. He won't shut up. <laughs> but hey, <laughs> you love a comic relief sometimes. Uh, and, anyway, so they join in with all the other future soldiers. Um, so they're about to fight against those white spikes that are heading around. Um, so Dan tried to deuce with Charlie to prevent the paradox. And for those who have drafted have may already died before they even started. So now, because um, even though it hasn't been born yet, they they actually uh, turn on the, the wormhole because now they're under attack. So that would be, begin to send all the soldiers directly to there, and they wound up landing directly into Miami, which now they landed all the way up, down on top of the skyscraper uh, with a swimming pool on top, while the other soldiers were already dead. Yeah, since they accidentally fell. So now, at Miami Beach, that's the location, I mean, you can already see how the entire uh, city has been in shambles. Yeah, a lot of destruction going around, mostly because of the aliens and of the right spikes and and all the attacks that's going on from all the militaries. You know, they're trying to stop them. You know, they brought in all these uh, ships around, all these jet fighting ships, and they were about to send all these missiles to shoot at them. That's what they're playing on. So then they got a call on on the colonel, and which what he doesn't know was that it turns out that the colonel uh, joined in with all the other 
military around because she wants to find all the other soldiers that were there. It was actually his adult daughter, Murray. And she's now being played by Yvonne Verhovsky. So anyway, they went inside the building uh, through the lab where they're trying to get where everything's all sterilized. So now um, all the aliens are about to be inside there too and they're trying to get everything they need until they're ready to actually shoot them while they try to escape going all the way down uh, to the, the stairs and, and they spotted one that's on top of the roof um, the other two uh, draftees, uh, Nora and Cowan, both played by Mary Lynn uh, Weiss Cub and Mike Mitchell were trying to, to search to see if one of these other aliens are going to show up and they do <laughs> So unfortunately they didn't want to stay there, so they had to team up with them. And all the other ones, they had to continue you know, fighting against those things, and, and they did. They, they tried to escape, and, and they go around, they started using their guns, and they started shooting all these other white spikes around. And then they tried to escape as soon as they can. They had to run as fast as they could before... Um, the entire uh, military base is ready to send out all these missiles to with all the bombs around to actually kill them all. But uh, Dan decided to uh, try to save one of them because uh, one just fell. But then they figured, you know, yeah, which was uh, Cowan. And then both Noah and Cowan decided to stay back and they, they're going to fight against them while you know, they're all going to get killed with them. So now, now all the rest of the soldiers have went straight into the wormhole, and now they're they're at uh, now they're at uh, the military encampment at the Dominican Republic. So Dan is being reported to Colonel Forrester, and which is Murray, of course. And she requested his accompany on her mission to capture a female white spike which are very rarer than the males that had been encountered. So they had to trap one and they had to put her in a cage which is not going to be easy but Dan decided to join in for help because he's supposed to be staying inside the helicopter until you know he's been called in but he decided to help um, his daughter because she doesn't want to get killed. You know, he doesn't want to make any of those mistakes. So after they finally trapped uh, this white spike, they decided to grab all these toxins from her. So that way they'll find a cure to actually destroy all these uh, white spikes. Um, especially, you know, uh, through the, especially in the past, you know, when, when this happens. But he's doing his best trying to save his daughter who at this point on was ready to be killed when he was trying to uh, shoot off all these white spikes around you know, through the ships and so after um, he failed to save her he finally went back in time to the present day um, he's already trying to recover from that but he did hold on to the toxin you know, didn't want to let go. So now that he's back to his his own present time, so in order to actually kill all the white spikes, you know, before they were ready to be said to be born, um, he has to take the toxins, uh, joining in with the rest of the crew, uh, including Charlie and his father. Yeah, even though the few surviving future soldiers to actually try to go straight to the Academy of Science uh, Glacier of the Kamolitz Island so that way they can be able to stop those white spikes from coming which that will lead to the bigger one yeah, the, the female which I know this is going to be a lot difficult for them to destroy meanwhile they have to use all the toxins to kill all the other babies are hidden straight into the alien ship that was already been frozen uh, from the glaciers. So yeah. 
And now that they both uh, head off to fight against it, even Charlie joins in, um, they finally destroy the mutter as well as the rest. Now humanity is finally free and they're safe and hoping that this will never happen again. And so now um, finally everything is back to the way they are. The entire family is being recovered. Dan gets to show his father, who is his grandfather, to, to Mary. And everything is a okay. And in my opinion, though, this is a terrific story. And I'm a sucker for time traveling uh, concepts here. And, and I thought it really blends together. We had to have all the soldiers, you know, fighting against an alien army in the future. You know, so that way they'll be able to save humanity as we know it. And this is actually a cool concept. I mean, just like all the other sci-fi uh, action-adventure films or with military uh, action joining around. I mean, it's the terrific popcorn blockbuster that you want to check out. And Chris Pratt did an excellent job. Uh, you really care for him, too. I mean, he can play a serious role, and it really shows that he really cares for his family, even if he has been in conflicts, and he does what he can to help them out, even with his friends and his military friends around. You know, and, and he struggles this hard as a teacher, I mean, and a scientist. I mean, he really cares. And as for the rest of the cast, too, uh, I thought uh, Yvonne Strahovski is terrific uh, as his uh, adult daughter, yeah, Mary, and even as a little girl she was uh, very sweet and special and shows that she really cares. But I know she's trying to fight on her own, you know, she's trying to save humanity, she's trying to go after this white spikes so that way she can get all the toxins to destroy them and does what she can to help. And, and he, also, uh, J. Kim Simmons was very funny, totally badass in, in this role. It really shows because, yes, with all the family conflicts going on between him and between the, his son and all, he does what he can to actually try to connect from all the mistakes that he made in the past. Uh, Betty Gilpin um, is great and as his wife. Uh, Sam Richardson is just a comic relief. He's hilarious. Yeah, I, I love that scene where, he, he, you know, when he's trying to shoot the, the white spice, he keeps saying, shit, 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 Yeah, too much. Uh, that, that was just hilarious. Um, uh, and the rest of the cast was great, no doubt. Uh, but it has terrific special effects. I mean, with the wormholes, you know, going directly, the destruction of the cities and other places to the beach, and all, and the alien creatures that's been created, you know, sort of like a, a batch between all the other, you know, sci-fi movies we've seen. You know, like, I mean, this was really creepy. I mean, you even got testicles, you know, shooting up too. You know, there, there's some there's some of them that actually have two, but then there's ones that are they're just only one. They even have a red belly and all. I mean, of any other kind. You know, like the father, the mother, the childrens of any. There's like so many of them that it's, it's, they're so creepy. Yeah. Very good hybrid. So they they look almost like the the aliens from the movie Alien and. You know, like the xenomorphs uh, crossed in with the tremors because they stink and all. And, and they had, uh, they look like the skull crushers from Consco Island. All blended together. And I guess there's a bit of Cloverfield in there too. <laughs> okay. But um, even for its derivative execution, uh, I thought the story was uh, well done. I know um, it's slow paced at times because of its 2 hour and 18 minute duration, 
and that's fine. I, I can live with that. Maybe it could have been faster, but they do what they can to make the story even longer because, you know, they're trying, they're in the middle of the war, so of course there's going to be more to it to stop these uh, aliens from coming, or they're trying to prevent that from even happening, you know, before the future starts. So that's the idea. Um, anyway. <laughs> so, if you're an Amazon Prime member, and you have Prime Video, uh, for your streaming devices of any kind, especially if you have it on your Blu-ray players, 4K players, or hell, even those other streaming devices like Roku, uh, Apple TV, Amazon Fire Stick of any generation, like first generation, second generation, uh, with the 4K included, even the third generation too, and the Cube. I mean, check this movie out. It's available, um, along with all the other Amazon originals. And if you have a 4K TV or HD TV on this big screen or so, or maybe you can watch it on your small screen or online or anything, but get around with your family and grab some popcorns, some drinks, and some candy if you want, <laughs> and just sit back, relax, and enjoy watching this movie on this big 4K HD screen uh, with, even if you have a home theater system all encrypt with it so it makes it look like you're watching this at your local movie theater but of course it would play even much better on a big movie theater screen <laughs> if they have um, had accessible with it though just like how HBO Max and, and Disney Plus was doing. But, yeah, they have access for it. But then there are some drive-ins that would carry this. So it just won't be the same. But that's okay. Well, anyway, uh, that's the Tomorrow War. And I give the movie four stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.